So I'm going to save this as event handling lambda. And we're going to save the changes and click OK. Rename the file. Now everything will going to stay the same. We will just going to reduce the amount of code that you would use in an event handler. Okay. And once I'm done writing the code, then I'm going to explain to you what exactly I did. So for now, I'm leaving the button exit in its original form and I've changed only the button new in the lambda form. Can you see the amount of code reduction there? And that's a lambda operator and I'll explain that to you once you are uh, done coding it and once you're done testing it. So test it and you'll notice the new works the same way and exit works the same way. I mean like you can differentiate between the two when you're working with them in the output mode, uh, in the run mode, but behind the scene one uses lambda and one doesn't. So what really happens behind the scene is what we'll like to understand here. So the lambda expression when you use it like that, the compiler actually treats this object as if it comes from an anonymous inner class. Notice down below, E is of type action event. By using the lambda expression, it knows that E is of type action event. That's fine. But how does it know that action event is a generic type of event handler? And how does it know that this line actually needs to go in the handle? Okay. So basically what it does here is that it understands that E is an anonymous type. And in this case, the compiler understands the object which is E, must be an instance of event handler. It just understands it because of set, set on action. So because of set on action, it understands that action event must be of type event handler. And then since event handler interface, this is an interface, it only has one method defined called handle, so it knows that this line must be the body of that. So, it, it, so basically it's a little bit of you know, intelligent code. So now if I were to translate this into that, so similarly I will gonna get rid of this whole thing as action event E and I can use my lambda expression and all I need to do is I can get rid of my override and I can simply just throw this statement out there. Now here is a drawback to this situation. In case, now in this case uh, the event handler only had one method to override which was handle so the lambda expression was able to make sense out of it it automatically thought that this must be the line of that method if an interface has more than one method then lambda expressions will fail so now when you run it it just gives you the same output as before